Hello, hello, come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about a very, very important topic. This is a very basic topic and very exciting topic. I mean, it's me, Carolyn. So all the topics I talk about for business analysis is very exciting, right? You all agree, right? <laughs> Well, whether you agree or not, this is what we're talking about today. And this is the topic of whether or not the business analyst role is an IT role or not, right? So is the business analyst an IT position? And this is a question I get from a lot of people. I'm going to be answering it for you right now. This video is brought to you by Vertex42. Vertex42 has a number of high quality templates that's going to be very helpful for you in your next project. So whether you're looking for a budget template or a SWOT analysis or a Gantt chart or a to-do list or whatever you're looking for, they have a template for you. So I'm going to put the link to them below this video. So click on the link. It's going to take you to this page and then you click on show me the spreadsheet. That will open up this web page. It has so many cool templates. I mean, every kind of template that you're looking for, you will be able to find here on this website. So not just business analyst templates, but financial calculators, flyers, letters, resumes, project management stuff. Everything you need is here and it's all filled in already. So you just need to change the words. Some of them already have the formulas for your calculations and so on. So it's very helpful. And by you coming to this website and clicking on one of these templates and purchasing it, you will actually be funding and helping what I'm doing here on YouTube. So go ahead, click on that link below and check out these awesome templates. So the business analyst role, right? Is it an IT position or not? And the reason people ask this is because a lot of newcomers to the field are looking for a job that does not have as much technical requirements, right? They're worried that they're gonna be stuck writing code and they love IT and they wanna do something in technology but they don't wanna be stuck behind a desk, uh, stuck looking at their computer screens all day long just evaluating code. They don't wanna become literally programmers and they don't want they don't know if they need to have a programming background in order to do this job and so let me put all of your fears to rest the business analyst role is not an IT role it really isn't you could be a part of the uh, I don't know the IT department somehow in some cases but it's not because business analysis depending on what you're working in, the vertical that you're working in, the department, the company you're working in, it could require you to do um, technical things, which means that you're a technical business analyst or you are an a, a IT business analyst, but that's not the, the gamut of business analysis. You could be a functional business analyst, a process business analyst. There's many different types of business analysts. So don't feel like you're going to be stuck behind your computers writing code. I have been a business analyst for many, many years, and I have not written a line of code. Well... To be honest, I wrote a line of code for myself. I didn't have to, it wasn't a part of my job. I just wanted to test something and I wrote a line of code or whatever, but that's not required for the job, okay? <laughs> it's not required. Don't get all you know excited and don't get all discouraged because you don't wanna be a programmer. You're not gonna be a programmer to be a business analyst. Now, it's good if you have a technical background. I mean, that would just help you to communicate better, but it's not required at all. It's not required at all, at all, at all. Don't be worried about that. If that's what's holding you back, you're looking at the wrong thing. Now, as I said before, you could have jobs that specifically say technical business analyst or IT business analyst. What that means is that you're going to have to get very deep into the, the technology if you're working on an IT project, you're building a software or you're doing some kind of technology advanced um, project. You're going to have to get into the details. So you're going to have to learn some of the jargons. You're going to have to learn some of how the things work, but you're not going to actually be the one doing any of the coding or any of the things like that. You have to understand how it works just from the, the perspective of how it's going to solve the business problem. How will this solve the business problem? You don't have to get into the hows of how it, all the techniques and the technology behind it. You just need to know, okay, we're doing this. You're really looking at the what. I mean, let me clarify, not the how, it's really the what. You're trying to say, if I understand this technology, it's going to be used to solve this problem I'm trying to solve. Okay, so for example, if you're working at a bank and they need to install a new banking system, 
I don't know, maybe a mobile system to go with their, you know, their legacy banking system. I like to use my banking example. If you look at my other videos, you see I use a lot of banking examples. But I've worked in, you know, insurance. I've worked in um, sales environment, fintech. I mean, all of that. But I like my banking example because everybody can relate to it. So if you are working with a project and you're supposed to help them to launch this new mobile application to all of the customers now you might go in there with the expectation that you're going to be helping them to write requirements so that the developers can know what to build or if you're going to buy a system they can actually make the systems talk to each other there might be cases where you're having discussions with different teams and words like middleware api and all these different things come up and as a business analyst, you need to understand what those things mean. And if you don't know, it's fine because you can ask them because they know. <laughs> the knowledge exists in your sphere, right? So you don't have to be the one to go learn what a middleware is, go understand all the pieces that connect to it. You don't have to go do all of that research. No, the resources that know it, the experts in those fields are there. Your role is to just bring them together to ask the right questions and to come up with the right answers, I will let them come up with the right answers that inform you. So don't be put off at all thinking that you have to know all of these technical stuff for you to be able to do your job. No, you don't. You just need to know who knows it and go find them, bring them together and ask a question that would help you solve the problem. Because as a business analyst, you're really focused on the business goal. You're focused on how you're helping the customers or you're helping the departments that you're working for. You are really the representative. You are the voice that's gonna be helping to drive value in the organization. So you don't have to be worrying about knowing all the technical jargons and so on. So as a business analyst, you're, you're the rationale for change, right? You are, you're able to articulate the needs. You're able to do the elicitation. You're able to help the organization deliver value. And so that doesn't require you to know all this stuff about the techni technical details. So in many organizations, the business analyst is a part of maybe a product team or you could be a part of a project team. Um, you're, you're working closely with developers. You're working closely with um, the SMEs, we call them subject matter experts. So if you're working in an IT-focused organization, then you're working with the developers and you're telling them literally what they need to go build in the code or how they need to connect different systems together to work. If you're working in more of a process-driven organization, then you're working directly with the departments and you're trying to improve their processes to make sure they're being more efficient, they're not wasting time and you know, all of that good stuff, right? So it really depends on the organization you're working in, but the business analyst is there to understand the current state and to design and um, you know, define what the future state will be. And to get the tasks done or to help to get those tasks done to help in that transition. They don't have to do all of it because you're gonna have your project managers, you're probably gonna have a whole project team, or if it's a product management environment, you have a product manager, a product owner, you have different people that are gonna step in and help, but the business analyst is there to make sure that they're driving value for the business. They don't get bogged down in all the details without making sure it's mapping back to how this is solving a real world problem. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. <laughs> the point of this video is to talk to you about whether or not the business analyst is an IT role and it's not. Now, if you wanna learn more about business analysis, please go check out my website. I have um, a lot of different topics on there and I've put them together for you in a way that makes sense. So you don't have to be here on YouTube jumping around trying to figure out which video to watch next. You don't have to do that. Just go to carolise.com and go to free courses. It's all free. I'm not even charging you a penny. Okay. I'm not even charging you a penny. <laughs> So go to carlys.com, go to free courses, and you can see the different topics that I've covered in the courses, and I've outlined them in such a way that you can follow them from one video to the next and get the full breadth of what I'm trying to teach you. And it's also free, so go and get it. Now, if you want the paid course, I, I am coming out with a paid course in February, and you can also go to the website and join the waiting list if you wanna be a part of the first set of people to get my first offer when I put it out in the market. Right now I'm still doing the videos and still organizing it and all that stuff. But if you wanna be a part of the waiting list, you can go and do that on the website as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video, y'all. Go check out the website and I will see you guys next time. Take care.